Welcome back to Upside Down Beta. Let's talk about Thorchain and how high it could realistically go in a full bull market. So Thorchain is a cross-chain DEX, so basically a decentralized exchange. And what makes Thorchain unique is that it deals with native swaps. So basically native Bitcoin to native other assets like, for example, Ethereum. And that's not the way that a lot of other DEXs work, or at least a lot of other cross-chain exchanges. A lot of them rely on things like bridges, which can be vulnerable to exploits, so on and so forth. Not an issue here with Thorchain. If you swapped Bitcoin for Ethereum and then Thorchain blew up, you'd still have that Ethereum on Ethereum. You wouldn't just lose it like you might with some other ways that this has been done in the past. And another advantage of Thorchain is that it's designed so that the Rune token itself can actually benefit from the accrual of overall value of the protocol much better than some other DEXs, like for example, Uniswap, where the Uni token does not do a very good job of actually capturing the underlying value of Uniswap as a protocol. So those are a few reasons why people are excited about Thorchain. And so if we are in the early stages of a new bull market, then it's probably reasonable to think that Rune will be able to appreciate along with likely the rest of the crypto space. But then the question becomes, how far? In a full bull market, how high might we expect Rune to go? A lot of other people, when they try to answer this question, might just do it very subjectively. They might just draw some lines on a chart and say, I pick here. And this is where it's going without very much actual empirical reason for that. But I don't like to do it that way. You know, I have a PhD. I like to follow the data. That's the way that I like to think about these problems. And so if you've watched some of my other videos, you're probably familiar with the approach I like to take when answering this question. Question. So to go ahead and get into that, I basically use a machine learning and simulation based approach to try to get at this idea or this question of how high, in this case, Rune could go in a full bull market. So step one is create a machine learning based model to predict the expected price of Rune in a given point in time. And so you can see the green line is the predicted price, white line is the actual price. So not perfect, but it does do a pretty good job of giving a general idea of where you might expect the price of Rune being, or at least a fair value or a reasonable price for Rune being in a given point in time. And it takes three inputs as its input to make this prediction. It takes in the price of Bitcoin, price of Ethereum, and time. And the idea is that with Bitcoin and Ethereum, they tend to lead the crypto space. So if you know where they are, you'll generally have an idea of where other assets should probably be as well. And then that time factor is basically a catch-all to catch everything that the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum is not representing. So once you have this model, what's useful about it is you can ask it questions. And so, for example, we can have hypothetical scenarios where we say, okay, given some date, some Bitcoin price and some ETH price, where would you expect Rune's price to be? We can basically ask the model that. So for example, we can imagine that in a hypothetical bull market where Bitcoin's up at 200,000, ETH is at 20,000, then it would predict Rune, at least its expected price would be $175. Pretty nice. In a less bullish scenario, so a less bullish uh, bull market scenario here, Bitcoin at 100,000, ETH at 10,000, that would be a predicted room price of $48. So still nice, but not quite as high. But again, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I don't see this as being a particularly satisfactory way of doing this, because how do we know that this combination of Bitcoin price and ETH price is all that meaningful? Or this one here, why should we necessarily take one as being more serious than the other? And my answer, of course, is we shouldn't. We shouldn't just rely on a few cherry-picked examples. What we should do is we should use some simulations. Basically, pick realistic, re excuse me, realistic ranges for the inputs. So for Bitcoin, for example, I think most people would expect the next bull market to tap out somewhere in this range between the prior all-time high, and this is about 5x that value. For Ethereum, a similar thing, prior all-time high, about 6x its value, somewhere in that range. And then somewhere in this date range, so mid-2024 to mid-2026. If history is any guide, we'd expect the bull market to tap out somewhere in that general ballpark. And then what we do is we basically just randomly sample from these ranges. So we pick a Bitcoin price between these, ETH price between these, and a date between these values. And then we just ask the model, where would you expect Rune to be given those inputs? We record that predicted price, then we do it again and again and again, 10,000 times. And what that does is it gives us a distribution of predicted prices for Rune. That in all these possible bull market scenarios, where would you expect Rune to be? And then we can do things like calculate what is the average predicted price, what's the median, and also some other information. So for example, the mean predicted price, the average, 
is $177.9. Quite nice off of current levels. Median price is just a little bit below that. So median is the middle price, mean is the, the average price. We'll see in a minute why the median price is a little bit lower here. We also have percentiles we can look at. So the 10th percentile means that 10% of the simulations fall below this value, in this case about $61, 90% fall above. 90th percentile means that 10% of the simulations fall above $320, but then 90% fall below. And another way you can look at this is that 80% of the simulations fall between these two values. So let's look at the actual distribution now. So you can see now that's a little bit skewed to the upside here. We have some extreme bullish scenarios that are kind of pulling the mean up, and that's why the mean is higher than the median. So median is the middle price, mean average price, and median is less affected by outliers than the mean. And so that's why you're seeing this happen. And we have a few outliers here, super extreme bullish scenarios that are kind of pulling it up towards it. But overall, it's a pretty decent distribution throughout here. And then we basically just look at the median and the mean as being those central tendencies of if we had to pick a value of in terms of expectation, that's probably where you would pick. Though a lot do fall below those values and a lot do fall above. So let's go ahead now look back at the price chart and just see what would this actually mean for Rune if we hit that median or that mean value. And so what we're looking at is basically a upside from current levels of somewhere about 35 to about 39% hundred percent so quite nice indeed blasting way above prior all-time highs which is up at here at 21 dollars clearing well above that very nice from current levels of only 4.42 so i think these analyses are useful to ground ourselves a bit more in the data and that in a full bull market imagine that rune is ripping to the upside what you're going to see a lot of people doing is getting caught up in the emotion and just keep on moving the gold posts higher and higher and higher but in reality, should we really be doing that or should we be basing our expectations on something a little bit more empirical? And so that's where if Rune did hit these levels, you better believe a lot of people will be saying, all right, Rune to 1,000, Rune to 2,000. But maybe we should actually be at that point saying, all right, we've hit those expected targets. Should we now think that it's just going to keep ripping on or is the thesis changed? Does it seem like the market might be topping out? And it's certainly possible we could go higher or we wouldn't even get that high in those simulations. A lot of them were below this and a lot of them were above. But this, I think, is a good general ballpark, a good general idea of what might be realistic in those kind of plausible bull market scenarios so that we're not going in blind and we're not just going to get caught up in the emotion and the hype and lose sight of what might be actually more realistic. So that's where I think the real value of these analyses comes in. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us over on X. Also go to our website, pluritydigital.io, link in the description, see live data from our models and more.